episode with Phillips, the podcast. We back again. East Side Conversation with one of my West Side partners with two of them, actually. We got special guests, one that has been here before and one y'all haven't seen before or heard before. So I want to welcome a return guest, Lupe Gotti. Neighborhood, bro. And the homie, baby runner, West Side Rolling from the Spotty Side. Welcome to the oh, podcast. Yeah. What's going on, neighborhood? You got it, neighborhood. Neighborhood. Yes. We have multiple reasons why we excited to have Baby Runner here. Um, we're going to allow Lupe to kind of like explain. She the one who approached me about actually having this session. Normally, when someone gets at me about a comrade, a homie, somebody that I'm familiar with, whether personally or just by their namesake, they just make a connection and then we go from there and we sit at the table together. But Lupe invited herself to be here. So <laughs> She's a returnee. Yeah. We all familiar with Lupe. Bro, like, yeah, like, yeah, man, bro. Yeah, she like neighbor. Let me yeah. in. Yeah. Bro, so. yeah, one of my homeboys over here that you know, yeah. you know my talented homies. I got a lot of talented homies in, in our section, bro. Right. And I, I, I have a lot of faith in a book he wrote. You know where he was, uh, I think incarcerated. Right, you were incarcerated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was down and he wrote that book. And I just when I seen the trailer, I seen a lot of potential. You know what I'm saying? You don't have no idea how like. How odd it was for you to say, hey, SBI, trying to help the homie promote the book. Mm -hmm. I want to bring him on. You didn't even say no name. Right. You said the homie. Right. So I'm like, run it. Man. Had I known the name, I probably would have politicked it way more faster and different. Right, <laughs> right. Just, just salute. But what I'm right. saying is this. Um, you have no idea the passion I have for um, black authors that have come through the struggle. The only books, a lot of people tell me I sound well read when I speak. Right. To be honest, I don't read much at right. all. And the only books I can recall re reading uh, or a book my big homie Kiko from Left Mate wrote yeah. called um, Gun Talk. Right. And then there was a book um, the homie Mud from 6 -0 wrote called Little Checkmate. Right. Um, Gangster from Santana wrote a book called The G Code that I, I'm currently reading. Right. And I found myself interested in authors that come from our culture, our lifestyle, right. that have taken the time, first of all, because everybody has an imagination of stories. We, we know we've lived. Yeah. A, a tellable story. Yeah. Everybody realizes that, but to be able to freeze your mind, to capture right. that into a fucking form where people who haven't lived it can gather it, right. I really appreciate that. So right. I haven't gotten a chance to read the whole book yeah. because it's last minute. I didn't get the copy until yesterday. I only got, right. I get an idea. I kind of thumbed through it. Yeah. Um, I want to know, first of all, what inspired you to get into getting into being an author it's not something that everybody that's born in South Central LA, run these streets, develop a reputable reputation. Right. It's not something everybody does. So right. how did you get your start in it thinking, I want to write this down in the book for people to read? Um, well, I, I read a lot anyway, you feel me? So, uh, you know, I read like an interview with um, John Singleton. Um, no, it was really with Ice Cube. He was talking about John Singleton, right? And he was like, basically, you know, Man, it seems to say if I could write Steady Mob and I could write any, I could write a movie type mm -hmm. shit, you feel me? And that was really like, I was like, man, I got, and I was a rapper already, you feel me? So I had like songs that I would write out that was like storylines. I got a song called Baseball Caps. It's like a story of me getting stranded in the Hoovers and then having to go all the way to my PO when it was on Imperial and I'm running into all the gangs, but I'm not saying they gang, I'm just saying the baseball hat, you feel me? So, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so, uh, you know, so I'm like, oh, like, let me, you know, so I was stuck in my head already and shit already, you feel me? And then I always be just trying to think about how I can get my section on because I feel like we blackball, you feel me? So What makes you, you feel that? I mean? Are you because aware that your section is responsible for some of the greatest hits known to the origin the origin of hip hop, thanks yeah. to Bobcat as a producer. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, and and that's why I say it because like uh on YouTube right now it's a um it's a video called uh Six Minutes with the Rolling Forties. It's like we got a million homies, you feel me, that that got talent. You get what I'm saying? And we do, and like I said, we all do type, we all do like not only just one craft, we got about two, three lanes that we doing entertainment wise. You get what I'm saying? So just with that ratio and like if you look across the nation, you feel me? Like when you look at that six minutes with the roll of photos, this niggas from everywhere. We all what over. What year was that produced? Or did it come uh, out? Next, uh, 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 Earlier this year. Oh, just this film. Is it somebody that put it out that you respect, or yeah. just a random? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So, 
um, it's like homies from everywhere. You feel me? And there ain't no way that we won't somehow be, you know, mentioned. Now we got a homie that's we we, we get homies that catch fire, and it's crazy because a big runner is was with Thug was, Life. I was going to ask you because saying? often in the last couple few years when your name come up, yeah, it's kind of decipher is that a thug life runner or is it right. someone other than that so since you brought him up you can go ahead and clarify yeah shout out to the big homie uh what is the history of the runner name in hip-hop thug life the legacy shout out yeah. to dj crash d my boy big trap too because yeah. he always has always spoke highly of you yeah. as well as your homie t4 yeah you know what I'm saying my nigga ad the low yeah so um uh big runner um met tupac when he first started coming down to LA and shit like that, and they was close. So they formed uh, Thug Life and shit, you feel me? He was, he became, well, he was already uh, rapping. He was rated R. He already had an album called Double Jeopardy. That's why when you hear on um, How Long Were They Mourn Me, he say, you know what I'm saying, rated R, Double Jeopardy. He's shouting out the mixtape mm -hmm. that Runner already had. You feel what I mean? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Um, you know, so so they got with whatever. So, you know, Runner got a temper and shit. So some shit happened or whatever, you know. I, I can't say who right or wrong and shit. You feel me? So between, two of them? between just the whole, you know, psych, runner, okay. you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, big psych. Uh, yeah, rest in peace, yeah. uh, rest in peace, psych, man. You feel me? Um, you know, Pac and all that. Pac didn't really feel it. You know, it's a whole bunch of stuff that I wasn't there for, right, so right. I can't speak on. But um, you know, um, he was like a pioneer in that type of shit, you know what I mean, from the area. And he started a lot of people, you know, a lot of so homies came no, after no, that too. Homie kind of like one of the people yeah. that made Pac feel comfortable out here to- Yeah, Pac like, like wanted to be from the hood, but Runner it, didn't want it, him I, to. Yeah, IDC feel me? Photos, Cause it's like- Man, he wanted to be from the hood, you feel me? You got okay. pictures, there's pictures with Pac throwing up the hood and shit like that, right. but Runner didn't want that nigga that he seen like more in that nigga, you feel me? He was like, man, hell no, nah. you sitting out here banging. And back then, like, man, he, his word was Loke. He was like yeah. Loke versus, yeah. instead of mom and every other thing, he used to reference Loke Come on, lot. man, yeah, because yeah, he was hanging around the homies. Yeah. He was on 45th, right. you feel me? My block where I grew up at, you feel me? So, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I had a I had an early influence with that, you get what I mean? And so, um, you know, my talent came in. That's when I started fucking with, you know, Runner introduced me to Crash. You know shout what I mean? Crash again. Yeah, yeah let, shout out Crash. Give me a little history about um, your experience with Crash. For those that don't know, Crash has been very instrumental as a business partner of mine as far as the media side from the last 20 years. Yeah. Crash is one of the most g nerds I know, and he's been a pioneer in this shit. Um, he's often spoke on the Runner brand from the 40s through the years i know he had affiliation with you but i wasn't know sure if it was you or the big homie or both but give us a little history in your background with fucking with big trap um yeah man so runner had a gang of plugs and shit nigga that nigga was famous you know what i mean runner radar the superstar so that nigga knew everybody i was meeting all the rappers from that from that era you know what i'm saying dealing with runner and shit man that nigga was you know what i mean amazing so uh, is amazing, you feel me? So um, he introduced me to Crash and shit when I got out of jail or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and, and Crash had the little lab and shit, you know what I mean? So, you know, Runner had the spot, Crash had the lab and the, and the, and the technique and shit, so, you know what I mean? I recorded my first album over there, you know what oh, I mean? And right? it yeah, and it wasn't no rappers like that in the hood, like young homies that was like recording shit like that Spain, or not like that. Blue cat eyes and was, was yeah, around. Yeah, the older homies, yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? The older homies uh 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 had, you know right, music. But it wasn't like no tiny log movement like that. You feel me? So Nigga, you know what I mean? I dropped Keep It Spotty. It was an album, Crash. Nigga, helped me with it. We had a gang of DA shit on there. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? Um, you, you know, know it was a song, something called DA Pistol. Yeah, it was uh, DA Pistol yeah, Boy. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, they, yeah, everybody who know the album, they remember. You know right, what I mean? Yeah, it was that DA Pistol Boy. That's because Crash. You know what I mean? It was DA and we was Pistol Boy. So, like I said, I started a movement, whatever. Now the hood got. Nigga, a million rappers. Now we, right. now that's what we do. Everybody, niggas come to the hood. Niggas start rapping in two days. I see that nigga. I see the nigga get put on, nigga. The next week, I'm like, who the fuck is this nigga? They say he just got put on last week. Sure. They got a video of that nigga up in there. I said, damn. Like I got homies right now that I've been on for 30 years, 25 years. They whole life never thought about rapping, and they we having conversations and they finding a way out of somewhere. Like, like, hey, you know what? I think I want to rap. And when I think about what brought me into rap, 
years ago, yeah. I would shit on everybody that says this. But now when I look where rap is now, I can't knock it. I Don't you got a homie in jail that be going up 36? He be going up. Yeah, Dodie Six, man. What's that? No, what, what's that? What's your homie X for? That's your homie? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. situation is popping because 600 was here last week and he spoke on it and it's like big things popping in the future. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I know uh, they got some they got some shit uh, rolling with the nigga, but I don't, like I said, I don't know the Are business you about with it. some of the controversy attached to it right lately? Not really. I don't be paying attention Watch, to it. Like, I ain't going to drag you, know you say, into it. Yeah, I, I don't be. you do or not, you that's know. what we're here for. Yeah. We're here factual feelings. We yeah. dig somewhat into the controversy, but we don't drag nobody into yeah. it. So yeah. if a wise man duck that conversation, I leave it alone. Yeah, Are you sure. familiar with your little homie? Yeah, yeah, that's my little nigga. That's, 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 that's really like my little bro. Like I help raise that nigga. You feel me? So, you know, what I mean, it's great to see that nigga. You know, touching all type of and anything I can do, he already know. Any play I could play, I you know from the back scenes. I, I don't know, you know cuz, but anytime man. me personally, I see a crib progressing, yeah. I get a personal sense of gratis, uh, satisfaction. Yeah. And then the closer my you know natural connection to that crypt the more I appreciate it so that's yeah. a homie to me mm. so i love it you feel me i don't even not really familiar with the talent mm. i learned to look beyond that thing just like the i like to see yeah. when the homies is on when we winning yeah. i believe the more homies is on the more opportunities that are provided for homies that's not on right you dig a lot yeah i've been i don't want you to give away like a spoiler but i'm I want you to get a View yeah, and and, and and to bring that and to bring that back around full circle is like that's why I wanted to have a project where I could have all the homies out because there's so many characters in the hood. Like, bro, wait, you getting ahead? Of, wait, we getting ahead yeah. of because your format. I ain't gonna lie, you put, yeah. when you put great shit out to the universe, you realize great minds think alike right. because you are executing and putting in action some shit I've been dying to do. Right. So before right. I can hate, I got to salute. Like, right. damn. Yeah. You know, so, and what I want to describe to the people is this is an individual that's taken his imagination and forced his brain, trained it to trap it into a form you can read, which is, that's the old media. And now he's taking it to the next level where you can see it and visualize it in a film fashion, high quality, a street cat. And these are things that I've been wanting to put a trigger on, and, and I always overthink them and do too much. And I'm watching homies pull up, do it, and I can't do nothing but salute it. I would love to be a part of it, but give us a little background on how you came up first with the sub, the title, loyalty don't exist because the culture we come from is all based on loyalty. So we did this shit for. This is why we stick to the script, why we don't tuck our tail, why we rather be more down than deep. So how did you come to the title, loyalty don't exist? Man, because. Two loyal people ain't gonna meet. You feel me? Like it ain't that there'll never be a loyal person. He not gonna meet another loyal person mm. straight up. You feel me? And uh, you know what I mean? And and and, and time tests time tests all loyalty. You know what I mean? And and, and motherfuckers is not gonna be one hundred percent loyal to you. Why? Because everybody got their self interest and what they doing and this and that. You feel what I mean? So, you know what I mean. But but it's 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 the level of disloyalty that that I come about. You know what mm. I mean? And, and, and this book, I felt that I wanted to like give like life lessons in it. You feel me? Situations that happen. I want motherfuckers to be able to go back and look and be like, nigga. You, but that's why he got. You know what I mean? Or that's why that happened. And, you know what I mean? I kind of want it to be lessons in each. It's not just senseless killings. It all got like a, Correct. you know what I'm saying, something to it. And I was like, you know, what You know what could define what I'm trying to. Have you, you know had personal, you being stumped down. You know, I do my homework. Yeah. Without trying to do my homework. You know, when we get from out here, the shit come back on accident. Right. No smut. Woo, woo, woo. Establish yourself as a grown man now. Huh. Did you come with a, a level of loyalty to this situation as far as the whole situation that you did not see come back through it all? Yeah, I'm still I'm still loyal to the soil and all the shit, but more so than it is. But at the same token, the you know, everything ain't loyal back to you, man. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You catch you catch loyal people, loyal situations, you know what I'm saying? Like and and, and it's that. But like I say, man, everybody got you know the breaking point. Then it's not. It's not unconditional. It's not like it's. It's got a price. It's got a. You feel me? It's got a. It's got a breaking point, nigga. You feel me, nigga? And you know? and I've learned through. You know that what you're saying resonates so well with me because it's so factual. Yeah. However, I know it's exception to every rule. 
And there's certain people who were really attracted to that exception. Right. And we thought that everybody involved was attracted to it, and they not. Um, how do you balance, like like you say, still standing on what you're standing on and knowing, right. seeing your energy, you know, reciprocated is so rare. How do you still find yourself in Man, you just gotta know. You just got to know how to roll, bro. Like, you got to know how, everybody ain't built to be around you in every stage of your life. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so you got to have, you got to know where your limits are with this person is. This person may not be no person I can go and down here to, you know, uh, Rodeo and, and, and go do some, you know what I mean, or whatever with, they going to make it. Even if I'm doing some old crooked ass shit and I'm going over here, this person may look, you don't look the part mm. for me to go, to go over. They going to be on us when I jump you out might, the car with you, you my nigga. Right mentally, yeah. but physically come on man quiet. and that's just knowing the streets that's how you don't get caught up somewhere versus your your cousin yeah so mama and daddy's right that look work come on man certain, i feel come on man I you feel that. me you gotta able to maneuver in these la streets and that's what motherfuckers don't be understanding like you gotta it's a different type of level of uh you know what i'm saying uh the way you move out here bro so people come from out of town i just had a thought you remember when the homie first tried to put us in touch me and yeah. you didn't actually speak yeah if you can and I kind of ducked that. Yeah. I'm so glad we waited for a moment like this. Way right. more positive, healthy energy to right. speak about. Salute. Right, like, right, right. Oh, my, 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 my. God. I didn't even know you yeah, were super no. loaded like yeah. this. I thought yeah. that's the only couple bullets you had in your gun. So yeah. I was like, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> like, but it's way more layers. Yeah. And a, a, a phrase, shout out to Lauren. Love you, baby. Levels and layers is something I'm marketing as a term, phrase. Right. Okay. That's, just think about it. Right. When you want to go to the depths of subject matter, there's levels and layers of shit. Not just levels. It's like it's levels to this. It's not just levels. It's layers. And I appreciate the fact that you have layers yeah. and levels because um, so often when you develop yourself as somebody that's reputable from that bullshit environment, it's like that's where it stops. Right. And people put you in that box. And when you go to dig deeper, there's nothing more to appreciate. Right. And when you find somebody like, oh, you oop, through the liar, okay, cuz. You fit, and you find out that there's so much more to appreciate. It's something to celebrate. And that's the thing that I want to. That's the thing that I want to portray. I mean, a highlight mm -hmm. in this. You feel me? Because I feel like it's a lot of talent that's that's not being seen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you telling me? Okay, first of all, this is an inspiration of a nigga right here from our streets. Right. Bam. Then you wrote it out. You got it professionally um, written out. I don't yeah. know how to describe it. Bam. But then what I saw as a trailer, we're going to, yeah. for the audio version, we're going to have Alex with the trailer so he could play it. Yeah. You utilize grassroots neighborhood people to pull off such a quality representation. Tell me, there's no uh, um, professional actors in that in that trailer I saw? Uh, well, not in the trailer, but I got, some, I got some people that's going to. Um, I know your crew is professional. It's, that yeah. has to be. I know, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I know we gonna you have... just grabbed the homie with a camera smoking the blunt oh, yeah. and pull that off. <laughs> yeah, no, they crazy. Yeah, the editing yeah. and the filming. One shooter production, man. Yeah, shout out, one shout shooter, out to man. them, man. But oh, real. actual characters seem so raw and real. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like you almost, somebody with a camera caught some shit happening. Right. And I think that's gonna take you very far with yeah, that, man. Because I because I basically try to keep it as as real and raw as possible, man. Listen, man, and give my actors like this is my first time directing too. You feel Absolutely. me? So thank you, man. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So excuse me. This is my um uh first time directing. So I'm like learning like how to direct actors. Like it's not just uh, everybody supposed to know what the fuck you doing. So you know what I mean? I I, I gotta get the actors who, who have never acted before comfortable in a role and really give them a lot of freedom in it but that's what that's the way this is written i just I couldn't help you. but notice your book is written in script form was that yeah. automatically your see, thought process from jump i want to see this on a camera versus just being read see i wanted to do something i was never done on it so this is the first um book that's formatted the way it's formatted because either a book is a script or a book is a book you feel mm. me so what i did was i i just it's formatted yeah or, you feel me yeah, yeah. all right you feel me so like i i, I basically formatted Matter where you could read it like a book, the script where you could read it like a book, and I'm describing what's going please, on right? when you as a please. story, like you feel me, but I'm but, but it's but it's steady going that like it's a book, so I could just break down my parts to my actors, you feel me, and here, boom. Oh, so it's not actually they don't have to read the script, you give a 
spirit of the scene. Yeah. A concept of how it's going to start, how yeah. it's going to end, and how it's right. transpired. Then you yeah. use use your natural yeah. communication yeah. And, and, and work this so, out. Right. So 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 and I, do, I so since I'm talking about like what's being seen, I can't use words like he thought and he's thinking mm. you feel me so that makes it a little difficult you feel me but that's the that's the genius of it though you feel me is that it's like the, you know the what I mean? See, yeah. if you are the person that know it says he thought and you're the person communicating to the actors they don't have to know it says he's thought yeah but you just gotta, tell them your version yeah, but of i gotta it. but i gotta articulate that without through what through through just the action it's got to be done through action like i gotta tell y'all through action so what the person it, does how he thought you feel what I'm saying? Like, so it's, I've taken a drama class for a couple right. months in my life when I was a teenager. And this was similar how they would act. They would tell me like, you're in love with him. You just found out he has two girlfriends behind your back, but you're two weeks pregnant. <laughs> and he um, does not have the job he said that he has. And he just called you and asked you to marry him. Action. Lorena Bobby. No. Uh, oh, no. oh. You have to react. <laughs> but see, so, so like, you can't oh, remind me. Hey, that, 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 yeah, no they'll, give you, they'll give you this no loaded, bite, no loaded violence, scenario. Uh, oh, okay. You're staring at the person that just yeah. got at you like that. Right. And this is how you're feeling about it. I'm him. choking your ass out. Right. But it reminds <laughs> me of the process that you say that you utilize. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whether you know, have you taken any type of classes at all? Nah. I want to let you know you have a professional, mm -hmm. natural approach. Yeah. To the subject matter, yeah, bro. Oh, you know, what I mean? and it's crazy because the like the shit that I do, the process that I be doing, as I'm like going through and like studying and learning as I go, like what the fuck does this mean? So I go and I look it up and research it and shit, yeah. right? And it's basically Wise I'm like, man. oh, I'm already doing that. Like, <clears throat> got a name to it. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm is, like, is it's there crazy. a name to that? Because so many things that I thought was my great big idea, yeah. natural. Yeah. I realized, hey, some people already thought this. They even agree upon it. They wrote yeah. about it. Right. It, I wonder if there's a yeah. name to that phenomenon. Man, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I guess yeah. some people are naturally gifted because, I mean, I read a lot of books, but I, I never wrote a book. You know what I'm saying? No, but the thing I'm saying is sometimes you think people are naturally gifted. I have to agree to that. Right. But sometimes you think your thought and your gift is so unique that it's so special. And then when you start realizing I'm not the first one with this. It's kind of yeah. like, whoa. It yeah. can either make you feel like, hey, maybe it wasn't such a special thought or it was a far more special thought. Let me give you examples. Let me give you a simple example. I'm my mama's only son. So since I was a little kid, I can remember this just being something we always said in our right. in our living places. Right. Where am I control? Where am I control? Right. Can't find it. And I used right. to always say this as a kid, like, they need a button like on the TV or the cable uh Thing, so you can push it and find the more control. Right. Come on, kid. Y'all know how long ago I was. I'm 47. You know how long ago that was. Right. A few years ago, Direct TV main promotion was you could walk up to the cable box, push the button. It's gonna tell you right, right where you're remote. Uh, so my mama, who don't, we are we have such an age gap and generational gap in concepts and understanding, but she know from that, like nigga, you you something. Yeah, you knew something. The, what do you call that manifestation? Yes. That's what they call it to a degree. That's but what I, they call it now. But. There is something about knowledge. Like, there's a concept or a theory that, that says all the knowledge that is to know in the world is present in all of us as birth. It's like the Jetsons, uh, right? Remember back then we were kids? Talk to me. None of that shit ever happened, right? We And everybody talks to each other on the phones and all that flying cars is a flying car already. Plus, Ice Cube, one of my favorite lyrics, Ice Cube through the years, he was talking about somebody who got a long sentence and he said, won't touch down to we living like the Jetsons. Yeah, we living like the Jetsons now, bro. And guess what? Them niggas is coming home. They coming home now. They coming home. And so shout out to JD. I can't believe JD from Lynch Mob. I'm sitting here on the other night corresponding with my nigga on the podcast. He had Munchie B. Shout out to Munchie B from IF too. He also under the umbrella over here at Street TV with his podcast. Him and Mariah. Alex is really building, building something big. Salute to Alex. But um, I couldn't believe that I saw, I'm, I'm listening to JD do a podcast, and when JD caught that case, I was in the county jail with him. Right. Me and Cuz was like on the same, he was on the top tier, bottom tier, multiple times while he was in the county jail fighting that infamous case. And I remember rapping on the tier, 
and him being a lynch mob member in my mind and me being a young nigga coming up just trying to do my shit. And I remember JD was one of the people who let me know, like, boy, you better not stop. Yeah. Keep it going because it's home. They gave him 33, oh, yeah, he, he home. And there's so many other people like that that we thought when they gave him them numbers, you kind of put them in a the category of they coming home, a lot of them. So yeah. I salute that. Um, what's your thoughts on the fact that uh, recently here in Los Angeles, we see uh, a lot of gangs going through truces and trying to squash the long, traditional, normal, back and forth bullshit. Is that something you think is inevitable, something that you see, think is gonna become a reality out here, or do you think it's we a lost cause? Um, you know, niggas gonna have personal issues regardless, man. That's just black people, you feel what I mean? Um, but as far as like generational, you know, like a cult that is just so at a war with this other cult, half y'all don't even know what y'all warned for, you know, that kind of kind of seems a little frivolous after, you know what I mean, so many decades, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we stronger, truthfully, we stronger nigga together, like straight up, you feel me? But, you know, like I say, it's a lot of, you know, uh, unsettled beefs. It's a lot of shit. It's a lot of uh, pride in LA, man, you feel sure. me? So, you know what I mean? We can we can always uh, hope, for, hope for better, man, you feel me? But, you know, until a nigga is, is able to, you know, look over whatever the fuck, you know what I mean, that is, then shit. You know, and, and, and then the police, you know, we live in L.A., bro, so on some real shit, mm. the police is not, nigga, uh, you know, they not, it's not out of their range for them to pull up we and smack better. a nigga and, yeah, and blame them like, they, you know, they play ball out here, yes. you feel me, so remember, I remember back ball in the, game. Um, we really tried the peace in the nights. Yeah. It was like yeah. real documented evidence that they yeah. was out here trying to do what you suggest yeah. to counter that. Come on, man. So we can't never put that in the back of our mind, yeah. whether it's even with the Black Lives Matter, the whole shit, they were saying it was people of that nature coming amongst the people that were trying to pe peacefully protest yeah. and stir up things. We know from COINTELPRO, yeah. the whole Panther shit. Yeah. But things are so sophisticated and they rock everybody to sleep to think everything is so normal and cool. Right. It's probably so much shit going on, be bopping us upside the head that we not know aware to if it's not the emasculation of our men but they say that's how we start beefing on the um how we start beefing back after the last truce like you feel me again that was before my time but nigga, you know yeah, what they, I mean? they probably had something to do with that no shit. you say probably i'm gonna say um there is a high probability because there were reports of people standing out in their neighborhoods and cars driving by at rapid uh rates of speed and doing drive-bys and hitting people right between the eyes. That was the type of things that was fucking everybody up. Oh, yeah. And you know, usually when somebody of the culture drives by yeah, fast, shoot it up. Yeah, 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 the wrong yeah, person. Yeah. <laughs> These people was hitting heart shots right between the eye, head shots. They get yeah, trained, so, uh, they're trained shooters. Yeah, and then when, when it was just a theory or a conspiracy theory, I think throughout a high-speed chase, went on wrecked and got, and we realized that's exactly what was going on. So a lot of the other incidents that were just suspected, you gotta be, you know, just think about 9-11. A lot of people, you say it was an inside job, they'll laugh at it you. It was. But they'll laugh at you. A so lot of intelligent, oil. sophisticated people will laugh yeah. at you. So you gotta realize what you have the courage to believe yeah. and stand on out here. Right. Right. Oh God. How long is it? Huh? Go ahead. And that's why I respect that uh, Snowfall shit so much, man. When John Singleton was, you know what I mean, was alive here. Rest in peace. The great. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of that shit that he was saying in there, nigga, was real life shit. That's the shit that we had to deal with. And you know what I'm saying? Over here. You know that? Like, yeah. Shout like out, dropping sir. guns Shout off. Shout out over. to the real Rick Ross. I'm yeah. not familiar with the actual Snowfall series, or yeah. I have never watched the episode. Yeah. But I know that somehow the real Rick Ross name is affiliated with all of whatever. Yeah. And that is a friend of mine, an associate of mine. I don't know um, exactly what you're referring to, but I know the general story. Yeah. So you're saying it highlighted the whole idea. Yeah, that from like, the, you on. know, from like the dropping the guns off to niggas and mm -hmm. shit. We all know that story. You feel me? If y'all don't do your Check research out, on yeah. that, man, you feel me? Um, you it's know, so unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like so unbelievable. Go yeah. ahead. So, you know, so that's the that's the whole thing. John was crazy for that, man. He went crazy for that. Just with, you know, that, that they even let him, you know, put that out there. Because, you know, they'll shut a nigga ass out. You feel me? For it real. It seems like after so much time, it's a lot of truth that gets put out there that is, like, shocking. But it seems like 
the new generation of those people never inherit the evils of the past generation. So it's like, right. oh, guess what? It's not us. That's what they did. You can know it now. Right. But you think it's ever going to be a chance? I ask a lot of my guests this, the R word, reparations. Right. Do you think there's ever going to be a time where that word is a reality in the sense that we see it, a big chunk of money for the descendants of people that got fucked off throughout slavery? Man, keep it real, like, the world is changing. You feel me? Like, we, we, we understand me as a logical person. I understand, you know, what happened and, and, and still what's going on now. You feel what I mean? But also, the world is changing and people are becoming more aware, coming more, you know what I mean? You know, um, um, liberal and shit like that, man. So, mm. you know, the old ways of their grandpa and granddad, you feel me? They still gonna live off white privilege and stuff like that. Mm. But, you know, man, every... I mean, at the end of the day, what is racism? Somebody that's, you know, that's come on, man. That's a question because racism as a word or racist does not resonate with me as negative anymore. Right. Straight I think up. it's something that each race should be. I think exactly. most races are, and I think our race is the last one to the yeah. party. Exactly. And that's why we're so far behind in the race because we're not racist. The more footballish right. you are, perhaps the more effective you're gonna yeah. be in football. Right. You feel me? So we're in a race that's based on races and we're been tricked to think that racism is so evil that we're the last to practice it. And right. I think once we start realizing that racism is gonna be the path to being successful in this society and we start practicing it, you know, we have displayed as a people efficiency, resilience. And if we start utilizing the natural tools that everybody else is using, I think we can start covering a lot of ground. We can come from last place to our rightful place if we just start doing what everybody else is doing and that's really? being racist. And, 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 that means your race first. Real quick. <laughs> Real quick. My oh word, my God, bro. My word, bro. How do you find yourself, where do you find yourself when these subject matters get so deep? Because you don't hate either side. You no. love everybody. Yeah. But when he and I come in and saying right now, if it's life or death, we realize we got to go race first. How do you find yourself comfortable being more attached to us than it is to well, your I'm, I'm, Because I'm, I'm stuck in the middle, you know, because I got kids that's black. Do you realize in real life situations, especially us as men in, in the jail system, there comes a time where there's no middle line. It's either or. Shit. And you know the way you push Crip. We know you push Crip. If you was Mr. Lupe <laughs> and we was on a unit. Yeah. You couldn't be like this with us and still say, I'm in the middle. No, no, you, you got to pick sides right there. So do you, like, do you go to family functions where there's none of us and you just regular dupe? Not really. No, they don't fuck with you like that? I mean, you, I you go to. You that away or is I it just mean, not I just, I just, everything I do is with my homies. Like, so you only with my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my birthdays, C days, my kids' birthdays. Okay, I just yeah. yeah. But see, Lupe got a lot of. But see, that's the thing though. I mean, it's like men together. The whole thing is about when when a race decides to mend together. I mm -hmm. feel like right, and that's the problem with black people. We don't mend together until it's actually like combat, like mm -hmm. physical harm coming to Selena's us. Valley. Then we like, oh shit, nigga, what's up? Me and you, nigga, we against. Like, you feel me? But like other races, nigga, like, like I say, uh, Lupe got a huge Mexican following. They men together on small shit like that, just right. supporting her, like right. type, you feel me? Like, and so that's a that's a whole thing in itself, man. They don't, they don't hold it against you for being a crip. Or, yeah, they do. So, you they know do. The you know the comedy. Yeah, I know you do a part of politics. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, right. the messages, and Do you feel pressure ever to like? Shit, I'm always getting death threats, so it doesn't even really matter. <laughs> I know one of everybody, bro, one from of, the opposition. I, I know the, one of my <laughs> homies gave you some advice because they bumped into oh, yeah. you in traffic in a 7-Eleven. I do that right now. At the Late I night, they say you was on Vermont. You had no idea whom the yeah. occupants of the 7-Eleven was in. And when you, you went, I was, so you knew I was neighborhood, bro. Yeah, but you come in there like neighborhood, bro, like. <laughs> That's how she builds in the store? Yeah, yeah late, late night, crazy, late man. night. And the homie, his first mind frame was like, damn, she don't know who I am. And but, she give, is you ready for what might come with that at any man, moment? I'm always ready, bro. Okay. And I've always been with C-Mac. You know how that goes. No, but I seen you on camera, like, getting, flighting a female, too. Oh, yeah. What was that all about? You mind giving us a, like, why, why you hit that lady in that line? Oh, man, because I had went to go get some food, right? And mm -hmm. remember I had to pop up? So I bought food for everyone. And she must have been a smoker because what it was a long ass line, bro. And I was about to pay and I had two cans of soda. So I went, I was like, what am I going to do with two cans? Mm -hmm. 
So I went to go take it back, and when I came back, she was in front of my wallet, all my shit. And I left my wallet out, and everything was wide oh, open. Bad. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Yeah. She's right yes, in front yes, of it. Yeah, and I was like, excuse me, ma'am. I said, excuse me, ma'am. This, well, they started recording when it was already five minutes. Of course, out. yeah. So yeah. I said, excuse me, ma'am. I'm about to pay. You know, I'm about to go out. And when she did move, she was like, people here are crazy. And she went like this. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, and I, that's when I had moved a little bit more. I'm like, who are you talking to? I'm just going to pay for my food. And she did it again. And I was like, can you please move? She wouldn't move. And then she said, I'm not in your way, bitch. And that's when I like, every, I, mm. that was it. You see and the then rest. so you gave her that last warning. Like, and once she didn't. I don't know. It's because I be blacking out and then my right hand goes to the. You got to be careful chin. with that right hand. It's heavy. You got a heavy right hand. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I say that though. It was overhand right, right too. Right, I was like, that motherfucker was like, look, it was a shoulder joint. I was like, <laughs> that right, celebrity that right boxing jab. is celebrity boxing is becoming a more and more popular thing. You yeah, are. They've been, they've been trying to put me in the ring. Uh, have they? Have they um, suggested a matchup? Yeah, or your boy. My, a boy. Your boy. My boy. The one you mentioned earlier. Um, I am. Munchie B. For you and lady, oh, lady B. oh, lady oh, Munchie B. Why? Why would that? Is it just a Hell sport, no. or y'all what got some fuck? type of controversy? I don't know that exactly. My homies is like, we Hell can't. Hell no. Nah. Nah. You know, yeah, we don't. Yeah, we well, heard what yeah. that say. We're not doing that. Shout out to <laughs> Munchie B. I'm not familiar with Lady I Munchie B. I, I don't know if that's politics. his co-host Mariah or not, but I, I mean, it's part. You, you know, know, when when I went to uh, when I seen uh, uh, Mac Ten and he was he was one of them too, and they, they asked me the same question. You mm. know. And so I, if you if fuck that, we don't want to talk about. <laughs> We don't want to talk about that, which is not positive. Yeah, yeah. So if you, you know, celebrity boxing is positive. Hell yeah. Dude. Who do you feel like would be a good match for you? Shit, I don't on know. On some positive bro. shit. Shit, on some positive shit. I don't give a fuck who wants you to get the You got to call out Croissant Rock. I, I think I could take that little girl. That's what you got. Oh, she's a little girl to you. Chris hey, Rock. She's very aggressive. Yeah. Try to she's bully very me. controversial. Chris Rock tried to bully me, Custer. De- oh, they, she oh. dissed you and all that. Yeah, see, you see what it is. Try to bully me, Custer. You going to give her a twin tooth missing? I, I'm not bad, baby. Oh, wow. What's her name? What's her name? Vic, what's her name? Whoa, whoa, Vicky. Oh, whoa, Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> there it I'm is. Whoa, Vicky, bro. You know, that's the home, bully that's the home girl, Lupe Gotti. She ain't got no hate in her heart. She's Lupe's just trying to spark some controversy. She, she, get she it. want to get in that ring with any female that's buzzing. What about, what about, what about, uh, what about, uh, what about uh, Coco Bliss? She just, Coco she just, is little joy. I ain't hit Coco. Either. What? It don't matter, yeah, bro. She just, beat up, she just beat up another little uh, content maker, though. Just whipped on her outside. Boom, man. No, for she kind of white girl. She kind of squabbling up. Man, I'll do it, bro. What, what's, happening, what's happening with C Mac? What's the latest with the homie? Oh, I didn't want to. You know he's doing the Mac Adventures, bro. With uh, China. shout out to China Mac, yeah, yeah and C Mac. I like that shit, I man. Moved, That's a I, great you idea. Know, Are you were, on it at all? I was on the. I was the last. Look, I did the when they first started it. Remember when I gave him the cat? Oh yeah, I saw that. That was the day I moved out to oh, wow. the IE. Oh. So he's like two hours away from me, so I can't. So is that why we don't see as much content with yeah, you and C Mac? Yeah, is be, yeah, because I moved away. Okay. That's what took me a while to come out here. I only come out here if I got to do an interview or if me and C-Mac got a show or something like that. Like, we we, we we be performing together. I saw you with some cooking content as if you were oh, yeah. developing a cooking show. Are you still oh, yeah, with I'm that? I'm still doing that, bro. I'm Are still you? doing that. But right now, like, since I moved away, like, I've been, like, trying to get everything together. You know, it's That's been about a month, but I got, I got these, um, I've been buying stuff to cook outside. I want to cook outside. So besides tacos... What do you specialize in? What's what's good? Boy, tacos ain't cooking, man. Nah, man, I can make all kinds. But of all stuff. I, I me mean, as a pozole, oh shit, oh, all right, let me go. Fried chicken, all kinds of stuff. So wait, yeah. no, you went, no, you went, you went hella Mexican. Then you went fried chicken. Keep it going. What's... What else? Uh, I I make good stir fries. Oh, so you go all cultural. I go everywhere. All yeah. around the board. That's what's you know me. I don't see you ever ate a, you have you ate a variety of cooking. Bro, he no. told me he knows how to cook, and I went to his. Oh, you cook too? He said, but he never cooked for me though. Man, I'm sick. You sick? See, what, what? I got Not TikTok. No. Y'all check my TikTok out. Hey, runner. Hey, hey, runner. He's so funny. Man, <laughs> nigga, I make food for all type of shit. All I said, man. Bro, why you playing. didn't make no food when I went to, to your house? Because we was outside. <laughs> what the, what I'm going to do? Sit at the house and make a shrimp basket. Bro, he be telling me, like, he be making gourmet meals. And I'm like, bro, what? Braided, I went to braided shrimp. Yo, I mean, I mean braided salmon, nigga. I be. 
You feel me? Yes, what song, he, man, nigga? He, he like, hey, yeah. So we have to cook together. I don't know if that's the phrase nigga. he read somewhere, but he <laughs> fucked me up with the first phrase. Yeah. What's up? Braided. Braided. Song. Braided. 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 Braided or braided? Song and braided. Oh, braided. Not braided. He says he braided. Braided. Cook, yeah, bro. he be the, the meals he be telling me, like, oh, man, that's like some fire, but he didn't let me have anything, bro. When she I was be saying it, though. She be saying it. You know, <laughs> she be saying it. Tell me this. Tell me this, Kyle. I'm going to ask Lupe, but I want your perspective, too. Uh, uh, you know who Blue Devil is? Hate the world. Yeah, I'm about to. We're gonna go. We're here. We're gonna go. Yeah, do that. Do that. Do that. Blue Devil. Look. What you want me to tell him? No, look, Blue Devil. You know, earlier this morning, you told me you taking your son to school. You supposed to hit me back in an hour. Remember, it's been an hour. Blue Devil, haters world. Haters world. Shout out to Blue Devil, the homie. We're I gonna go on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, just recently, he did a reaction to a, a criminal and bozo conversation. I'm not sure if you're familiar with who Bozo is. I'm not. They're like Southside. I've never, I think, I, but they're not Mexicans, but they're Southsiders. Criminal, I've been knowing for some years. The and rappers. The rapper, yeah. Um, but I guess Criminal was talking to somebody named Bozo, and Bozo said something about he's ESL. He was proud of being ESL, English right. second language. Oh, okay. And Criminal used that moment to like say, oh, that's for Spider Low, because he and I had an exchange some months back where he went, so emotional and crazy about the fact when I was on Blue Devil interview, he asked me this general question. Why is it through the years more blacks having collab with Chicano rappers? And I said, mm, I think I heard something about that. Yeah, and I was like, I, I think it has a lot to do with the mastery level of the English language. And criminal is somebody that I've been dealing with for almost 20 years, if not 20 years, respectfully. He got in my DM and left all these disrespectful, highly emotionally charged messages that I couldn't understand. Outside of you, I have so many homies that's your race that I can say whatever comes to the top of my mind without them being offensive. They do the same thing. It's never a problem, but he got so What did they find offensive? He found offensive the fact that I said, uh, mastery of the English language? Is that your answer? <laughs> And then there was another. I like. I couldn't. I couldn't believe. Because you, you know about me. My, my, you know oh, about yeah, me. Yeah. Right. What, what, give me. What's this? What's, is it a music called mariachi? <laughs> is that a, is that a kind of music? The mariachi with the with yeah. Any kind of Spanish. Yeah, what's, yeah. The, what's the music? Like mariachi. That's a, that's a music, right? Yeah. For your culture. Could you what? imagine me asking you, damn Lupe, why your people don't collab with my people more? And you tell me, man, you guys don't really speak Spanish, right? How can the fuck that be offensive? You know, I mean. I, I don't find it offensive, but like me. Uh, I, I mean, just, you know, I deal with a lot of Mexicans, bro. It probably, Talk to I, me. I mean, I think that probably they could take offense to that by saying, like, dang, like, so it's it's because we didn't, we don't, we ain't mastered how to speak English. It's, it's the reason why accent. blacks it's don't want us. It's, it's the reason me, why. A Serenio asking me about, not me personally, he said, why do I believe throughout the years more of our people? Haven't collab more in the co in hip hop because I think back then and um, I said mm, I don't know maybe and I'm this is what I'm thinking yeah. the songs all the songs we bump right mm. that we love through the years with the right beat the right people on it and then you got somebody coming there saying drink your old English with my vatos and the <laughs> and that that's the typical approach throughout the years he asked me why through the years it hasn't happened more he didn't ask me why. I personally haven't done it. He asked me, why do I believe through the years there hasn't been more collab? And as I sat there on the spot and ran through my Rolodex of memories and thoughts on the subject matter, it doesn't mesh well. And the way it doesn't mesh well is because when we typically through the years have listened to this music, we listen. Yeah, but, that, but then the answer is difference in style, not, they, they not, not. not also um, my thought. It's not a fact. Yeah. It's my, he asked me why I thought. And I, I answered to him the best of, you know, this is what I may right. think. I had other thoughts if I would have had. You said mastery of the language. Of the though. English language. <laughs> That's not the same I, thing. I, I didn't right? indicate a lack of. What I'm saying is you and I may master English language to a certain right. level of we communicate the same. Doesn't mean we're, it, is, it doesn't mean we're excellent at Some English. Of my rap songs but like we've mastered it to a level where we communicate on a similar level. Right. Their mastery, whether it's higher or lower, it's right. at a different level to where it doesn't quite click when we come together. You could come from Baton Rouge. I could come from LA. You could come from uh. New York. And then we get on a beat to talk our shit, our different accents, our different yeah. slang. It still meshes to a certain degree. 
Right. You could be G'd up. You could be somebody I respect as much as I know as a Sereno, but when you jump on the record being yourself, it's a totally different sound than what we typically The hip hop, the hip, you saying the hip hop language. You talking about like, the they, hip. they not mastering the hip hop language because a West Coast nigga could rap like a East Coast nigga or any type shit. He, cause it's, it's, it's all in one. I see what you're saying. And our, yeah, you're saying. and whether we speak broken English or Ebonics, we have a same similar mastery of the English language. Mm. And when people are ESL, typically they have a similar mastery, just like, there are certain things that Hispanics say that are sim slightly off of how we would say them every time. Like, right. like just like they'll say like uh, something like this. Let me just give you an example. Like, hey, you going to the game? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there right now. We don't say I'm gonna go there right now. That's some shit y'all say every time. You know what it is? Like, when, okay, when I speak English, because I didn't learn English till I was in kindergarten, bro. So, excuse me, but like when you speak in Spanish, it's backwards. Exactly. That's what it is. So, like, the, the way we say um, a sentence in Spanish is going to sound different in English because we say it kind of backwards. So, have, knowing the two languages and then the accent makes it even more hard. So, if, if there's a certain culture of opening your mouth on top of beats that has become popular with a certain group of people, and then the people that are not from that group, mm -hmm. as they attempt to collab and fuck around, ask me, hey, why you don't collab more? And I sit back and ask, say, damn, it has to be, first of all, from my thought, I believe it has something to do with the mastery of the language. It yeah. doesn't connect. Because even some of my songs, I like like when I say chunky neighborhoods, bro, it seems like, I, like you could tell I'm not saying chunky. I, like you're saying, like you're saying chinky. Like I'm saying chunky, bro. You know what but I'm you, saying? You, but you have a lot of practice. Like even Blue Devil, he doesn't even, he's not a crib. But I love the way you say, check out the video. I can't, I can't roll it. <laughs> We like the next video. It's it's so it's not black. It's, it's an accent. It's a off. It's something different. <laughs> it's so different. I might not want to hear it on a rap song, but I'm attracted to it. Toward I like the way that shit roll. Right. Shout out to Hater world. world. Shout out to Hater World. Right. And I, no, I'm gonna say this though, Blue Devil, you ain't shit because he allowed that Serenio pressure for him to make a phrase to say something like. So what are you gonna do with this song? No, never. Oh. That's my boy. <laughs> I'm gonna no. I'm, I'm gonna lead by example and show how criminal should have happened. Um, Blue Devil said some shit that I didn't agree with, understand, or appreciate. Mm. He um, said I had a lot of trash music recently. Mm. You know what I did? I politely texted. Who said that? Blue Devil. Oh, he's a hater, bro. You know, he's a it's haters' <laughs> world. I should have known what I was saying. Hey, you know he's been talking about me, bro. Who got me talking about me? But he got love for you, though. He got love for you. But this is what happened with Blue Devil, and I'm gonna call him out right now. This is what happened. He <laughs> fell to the pressure me. because Blue Devil has been nothing but a supporter of mine from the time. I initiated communication. There's been never been nothing negative, so I don't. I take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. He fell to some pressure of wanting to say something just so people won't think, "Oh, you on Spider?" And all you do is that's what that was. So I'm not tripping. I know what it was when he even uttered it because he has been so supportive. It's kind of like um, when, like, I'm gonna tell you an example. I had a son who's on Big U football team. Curtis Jr., he's a senior at Carson High right now, number 14. But when he was like 11 to 12, we was on big U football team. Wow. And when we got there, it was like week number two. And they was getting blown out like 40 to zero, maybe week number three. And then when my son got there, we he started just doing, he was a man child. Not that he was so great in skill. He just was quicker developed than average kid his age. He, he, was, doing, he was doing all type of amazing shit. So big U had a motherfucking um, practice that after the game, he would do some shit like he'd line the team up and be like, you did good, you did good, you can leave, you can leave, you can leave. And then he'd be like, everybody else, he gonna cook you. Y'all fucked up, you shouldn't have you out, wow. My son, every week, first person, you out of here, gone, gone. I think it got to a point where, Big, you felt like, I can't just keep letting him go every week. I gotta let him get some of this too. So one day he made my son stay for the scolding after we got blew out. I got about 12 niggas standing up here and he giving it to him. And I'm watching every little boy start crying because like every little boy got a tear coming down their eye. Man. So I'm like watching. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna walk away. I'm like, man, I see my son eyes pink as a motherfucker. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm thinking to myself like, man, do not cry, nigga. <laughs> and then he like, but you asking every nigga like, what you do today? They like, nothing. He like, what you do? Nothing. What you do? Nothing. 
my son was like the last one. He like, what you do? He was like, got a sack. I was like, sweat. <laughs> Oh my mama, mama, and on, oh sorry, bitch. You was like, oh my mama, he was, and he was like, he was like, he was, his whole energy changed. He like, broke the table. He was like, yo, Domino. He was like, he was like, you right. He was like, he looked at me like you right. But plus, my young nigga, like the tear, it never got wet in the well or nothing. He like held this shit up. But he was barking at everybody, so yeah. it just reminded me of that. I think at some time, some point, the people that's giving the judgment, like we can't just keep giving you the. We got to include you in the bullshit, too. I think that might be the same thing that uh, Blue Devil was going through. Like, I just can't be spotty, spotty, spotty. Now it's all, the conversation was all based on the rasa. I think he just had to feel like, oh, some music trash. And then let me say that, to say I'm, you know, I don't feel like it really was something he meant in his heart. I feel like he feel like the same way, Big, you feel like today, I can't let him go today, too. Because yeah. he always going. I think Blue Devil felt like, I can't just be spider, spider, spider. Just, I'm gonna take this one time to just to stay. You know what I'm saying? I don't hold it against him, bro. Uh, you wanna collab on a song just to kill the noise? I wouldn't mind. My thing is this, cause this thing, Blue Devil, Serenio, Beautiful yeah. World Remix, C Mac, it might he's make sense. One of, he's on one of my songs. What's the song? Hit your Lupe. Hit your Lupe. He's, he's a he's a hit your Lupe. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, that's love. Yeah, yeah. On Crip, that's love. Cause one of the most funniest things yeah. is watching Lupe do that slow motion. <laughs> Fast dance. Shut up. I that's what homie says. You know what I mean? I can't dance with the shit, dance but I can follow you. <laughs> it's like you count me. Your you think it's every... dip, bro? You think it's dip? What? You think it's dip, baby, bro? That's our dance, bro. You get it? I'm talking about a dance like nah, that, bro. Man, see, no, just, that's Lupe, our dance. Lupe, Lupe hit the rendition of it. I really had that dance in turn up a long time ago. Uh, yeah, that's our dance. We're back so in the day. It was more of a smoother <laughs> like, yeah. type. She, when Lupe be hitting her, she threw her own little ducky in on it. She made it a shit. I can't yeah. knock it. She made that was, it a that's shit, what, That's bro. what we used to What was yeah. your song that we used to It was to? Turn Up. Yeah. You know, all I need is Turn Up. Yeah. You know, be yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's it's real funny. It's, it's a hood It's a hood does. It's oh, like, so you I, just rebranded it, remarketed yeah, it's it. A homie, yeah, it's she a put homie. her twist on it. It yeah. yeah. went viral. But look how shit go, because it looked like to the world, C-Mac taught you that, and it's a play off of his shit. I had to put him in there because he put me on. Oh, so, <laughs> so you the originator? Yeah, it's the homies. We it's our it's our dance. Yeah, the, the the thing on the head is the homies for real. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, but C Mac fuck with the homies tough. Being yeah, raised yeah. around the homies all his okay. life, so he do Night the five boy, on his for shit. The homie. You feel me? You know what I mean? But you know and that's a because it's a glove. It's like our, we put it on for uh, it because it's like the, the glove. Man. Okay, you feel what I'm no, saying? Yeah. About, uh, the homie. Um, Hard head. Hard head. Mm. That's where I got FIP. But he used to go like this, but I just go like this. You Explain know to um the world what uh C Mac represents for the forties, the fifties, that general uh, area between Western and Normandy. Just because, like you say, you feel like the section been blackballed, so much talent, never got a real look. And somebody like C Mac, who doesn't seemingly possess all the talent, brings so much light to the section. Explain to the viewers, the listeners, how we appreciate that, even though they don't really realize how we could appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, C-Mac uh, to the section, man. I mean, I look at it from a different perspective. I've been doing this entertainment shit for a long time, you know what I mean? So I see how a person could get to where C C-Mac is and really not deal with homies no more. You feel what I'm saying? <sighs> so by him even still staying around and going through what he go through, you feel what I'm saying? And just being around and being accessible and shit like that. Like, you feel me? I can't do nothing but uh, salute that. that. You feel Likewise. what I'm saying? And he not a homie that's not, that's like not trying to help another homie. If you got something going, see me I can fuck with you. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, God. You know, we don't get too many niggas like, that's part of that, you know what I'm saying? It's able to do that, you know what I mean, right. from our section because nigga, I'm talking, it's hard out here, nigga. Very hard, very you know, difficult. So niggas is getting killed, niggas is getting put in jail for life, niggas is, you know, we robbing, trying to eat right now, not just, you know, so our talents is being wasted time after time. We got mm. so many homies that have so much talent. Got I think all day. about that when I think about me? our abortion raid and so many things make me think of what you just mentioned, bro. Yeah. That is deep as fuck on oh, my mama, mama. Yeah. That's why I salute somebody similar as yourself who not only does this typical rap, everybody does that. Yeah. Now podcasting is gone yeah. in that. But now a lost art form is writing, especially from our culture. It's not yeah. cool. Yeah. I can write. I'm intelligent. Yeah. I can 
express myself well. I can put a creative thought together the average person can't really design. That's yeah. a lost art. Yeah. And for somebody who know what it feel like to get looked at for just being stumped down, to, to dedicate to themselves something um, far more deep, I have to applaud it. I appreciate mm. it. You told me before we came on camera that you already working on a part two. Yeah, I'm going to um, drop part two before I drop the movie and shit. So the book, um, part two of the book will be out um, before I uh, finish production in the movie. But uh, yeah, man, like I say, man, to piggyback on that, man, that's like, like I, you know, um, getting niggas to do different little small parts, nigga, and still have a face. And then like I say, bro, like, like that's this whole project, bro. Like everything that's in the movie is by our area. That's what I'm trying to broad. That, you know, that's what I'm trying to portray. That's what I'm trying to, you know what I mean, show the world that our it's area one, is done. really. Or you got room no, I'm still some shooting. cameos no, pop I'm still, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop up. Come fuck with it. Like, yeah, got for you. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Like, 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 basically, nigga, our hair, the people who get their hair done, is done by the homegirls. You feel me? Um, you know what I mean? The 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 casting, we do all the casting. You feel what I'm saying? The fucking the, the uh, wardrobe, nigga. We we supply the wardrobe. The homies that got the mm -hmm. clothing lines and different mm -hmm. shit like that. Mm -hmm. The areas, the locations. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you know what I mean. That niggas. You know what I mean? Everything. If you got something that's going in the hood, Ground we can put up. that in here, nigga. And I just want to show a project that we all own and just show like mm -hmm. where y'all can't like. If you feel if like we do feel blackball, but now I'm trying to come with a way where you can't blackball us. Right. Show to the world, bro. Like right. you feel me? Because all y'all fuck with folks. Like nigga, whoever in the game, y'all got some homies that. So it, it's crazy oh, how you, ain't no you, homies. You think it's important there, to like, brand it as a Fodies project or? No, you, this is actually an LA project because, go. like I say, there you go. we got. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just saying, as part of my area, I can speak for my area. I can go more in depth about my area. I can include the Hoovers. I can include the the Troubles. I can include the A-Tray Gangsters. But just a perspective. The highlight is from going to be on what mine. they. Correct. Yeah, I can't. Really Really go too deep into them because that's not my area. I don't really know, you know what I mean. Until but they're I, part of my overall you know, experience. Yeah, but I'm gonna go ahead and share some light on their area. Correct. Share some lights on these area because this is an LA story and it ain't just the foldies running around here like how I'm gonna tell an LA story without telling our adversaries and shit like Correct. that. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we already got we already got uh, the uh, the ETGs um, knocked out. We Rest got in the, peace, little Sody. Yeah, man. man. You know what I'm saying? Sody yeah, but, and Cody, they most notable um, yeah. losses in the recent years that I'm familiar with that I don't yeah. know. But go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, condolences and shit. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, like so, like I say, we just trying to get all, and we want real actors. Like I can get some. I, I mean, I, don't, I can get some niggas that just be like, oh yeah, save you from trouble. Like right now. Or yeah, but I, I really got a real hand out here in these streets. That's so, gonna be a very unique approach yeah. to this, man. Yeah, you, man. Do we have a timetable? Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, we trying to finish production at least this year. You know what I mean? And so. Um, then now. we could just take like then we could just take uh, you know the rest of the time just for the you know editing and doing and we doing all this from the ground up we ain't I never did that. like none of that and if y'all look at the trailer it's 100 like you feel me the trailer loyalty don't exist on YouTube you know what I mean it's uh is that the yeah. name of the channel or that's, just uh, that's the name of the, yeah that's up? the name of the trailer you know what I'm saying you go check out the trailer uh, yeah would you, would you tell me okay since we out here thinking that this is all about loyalty. And we live in a life where we realize loyalty doesn't exist. Then what is it actually to be obtained, or what's the goal? What's the, what, what can we actually get out of this if it's not loyalty? Uh, I feel like we only what, loyalty life? over love. Yeah, the whole where, 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 wherever we thought we was gonna find loyalty, if loyalty is not available, what could in this we gang life? Be available? In this gang life, though. gang life. Okay, we leave well, it there. Well, you gotta understand this uh, uh, gang shit was made by children. You feel me? We was, we, you know, our, our big homies was kids when we made nah, that. See, so a I, lot of our. I don't want to say I thought that me? already about being said that, but go ahead. Man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so, man, preach. Yeah, man. So you know, like a lot of a lot of our uh, a lot of our viewpoints uh, and, and 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 standpoints and guidelines it come from a childish type of you know outlook. But you know what I'm saying? The 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 rationalization in it is that this shit gang, whatever it is, like you know what I mean? Wherever I'm from, nigga, this is you know I'm from Foldies, nigga. So that makes whatever. Type Type of irrational, you know what I mean? Why do we? Uh, but like, you, you articulate this so well. I can do as well. So why do we not totally detach ourselves, knowing that? Because because of what we the loyalty that we experience coming into it. The loyalty that, that does loyalty, not exist. That 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 portrayal of loyalty, right? When we first came in, 
Because if it was bad, motherfuckers wouldn't have stuck around. You come through, it ain't too many niggas coming to the hood, getting their ass beat every day, and this and that, and you know, so, so it was one type of calm area that made you feel like, oh shit, this shit for real. Like, niggas is really, they love me, everybody love me. Niggas pull up, nigga, you a young nigga, you don't know. Niggas pull up, yo, little homie, I got you on the, nigga, you know what I mean, so little we, homie. We still the... believe in that essence of that, that, that pure, I got you, you got me. We still believe somehow man. deep down it exists. You gotta understand, man. You gotta understand, man. The, the the black man or the minority man is 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 is, you know, it's a fight out here. It's y'all mm. against everybody. You know what I mean? Type shit. So when you get that camaraderie, remember, it ain't just these other people that's against you. That's how they want us to perceive it. Like, mm. yeah, well, y'all felt a little pressure from the other side, so you joined the gang to kill them. Like, no, it was a mm. the, our, our, our actual loyalty came in on the pressure that we had from the world, from society, you feel me? So then, because we feeling like ain't nothing for us in the world, not just them niggas, including them niggas, you feel what I'm saying? Like, nigga, so then we attached ourselves to the people because when we was broke or, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and the circumstances that they, you know what I mean, that they allow us to be in, you get what I mean? We attached to our boys. We attached to niggas where I'm sleeping at. I don't got nowhere to sleep. That's all a sign of poverty, bro. You get what I'm saying? Right. I don't got nowhere to sleep. So I attach, you let me sleep at your mama's house. That's why when niggas get into it, it's like, nigga, nigga, I know your mama, nigga. Like, nigga, I know you feel what I'm saying? Because this is the part that attaches, you know what I mean? Where, you know what I mean? And, and, and that builds that mentality, how they be like, oh, we don't got no, you know, no stake in the course or however. This type of, when you talk about the, the, you know what I mean? The um the upper the upper class uh child that's not dealing with none of that. All he did with his loyalty is coming from his parents, it's coming from his grandparents. A pure it's process. From, yes. Yeah, like they like, okay, that's who they attached to. When I don't get along with my mom and I feel like I'm no I got nobody, I talk to my uncle and he's a you know what I'm saying, a fucking um uh, 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 um successful whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? So but when we attach, we attach to little little Uzi Our Club. uncle or our uncle yeah, yeah. who ain't so successful. Yeah, right. And learn to cut corners. Yeah. Man, this is how you do. This is how life is Mm. for you right here, out here now. You feel Mm -hmm. me? So it's like y'all, you know what I mean? Behind the scenes, y'all pushing us into learning from these people. You get what I'm saying? From from the people that's around us. Make sure they fucked up. So all y'all examples is Mm. fucked up. You get what I'm saying? So this nigga 25, he ain't, he don't, you know, he still, he think he got it figured out on God. I so he gonna, I give you, he gonna give you some real shit, like nigga on the real, but nigga, when you talking to that same person 10 years from now, he gonna be like, nigga, I was fucked up. And then we commit ourselves as youngsters to what he said yeah. and not realizing we have applied Boom. ourselves to a less than appropriate. Uh, Go out there, smoke some, get life, then you be like, man, these niggas really ain't for and me. And that could have been the there. next Malcolm or, tell or, me this, I, as I focus on the problem publicly, I like to give equal amount of time to possible solutions. Right. What do you think are, we know everything we just discussed. It's all bad, down bad, fucked up, the worst. As people that would like to see it get better, we have no ideas, just me and you looking at it. What are some of the things you think we should start doing actively? Not the big shit, but day to day. What steps should we take to make sure that even after we're gone, the future may see a different experience when it comes to our communities. Create opportunities, man. First off, money, uh, niggas, niggas ain't finna get along, nigga, we broke, period. First off, like, we, as long as we out here struggling and shit, that shit ain't never gonna work. But, but we need to find ways to create opportunities for each other, you know what I'm saying? And make it where it makes sense. That's where, like I say, again, with the book, I like, I pull up, and I'm trying to give, you know what I mean? Give some spotlight to these other places, like, so we can all like, you know what I mean? So y'all can eat over there, we can eat over there, they can eat over, everybody eat, then that stop, we ain't, after we eat, I'm not coming to try to slide on you right mm-hmm. then, like, you feel me? So mm-hmm. we over here enjoying the spoils of our, you know what I mean? Or whatever the case may be, bro, like, and 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 that's where it's going, that I, I feel like, Without without opportunities, bro, that's the shit that causes war, man. You feel me? This, this been since the beginning of the time. Y'all got the food and the resources, then it's going to be war. If we don't got it over here, we going and looking for it. You put my mind on a viral clip I saw. It was a black or white clip, and it's a young black dude with a small fro. He's talking to a white man. He's like, sir, if I come to you and beg you for a piece of food, a piece of bread... And you tell me no. And I come and beg you again. He says, only so many times I'm going to come to you peacefully. Right. He said, every expert in the world will tell you the next move is to hit you over the head, right. sir. 
Right. So I resonate yeah. with that. Yeah. So so that all that's gonna do is breed a, a, a war type mentality. You feel me? So we ready to war with anything. Do you believe that the mentality of war that we possess as a people has to see its fulfillment and destruction in a whole new mindset has to erupt amongst us because I don't see the de the, the destructive shit disappearing. So do you feel like it has to play out to eradicate itself or do you think that forever we're gonna have um, senseless element of murder and competition and, and dissension between us for no reason, just because it's tribal, just because it's fun. Yeah, that's a, it's really, yeah, that's really a black, that's really a black problem. We dealing with that everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Even places that don't Other really countries. consider themselves gangs and shit like that. Mm -hmm. They, they still warn just, that's just how I black wonder people. about that because I think, okay, in LA they say, oh, Blacks, murder, black on black. Ooh, I say, okay, gang banging, yeah, a lot of senseless. But then you think about the states that don't got no gang banging. They still got a black on black, bro. What the fuck? Because it's an agenda, man. You know what I mean? A black person is made to hate. This is shit that's been in plans for, you know, hundreds of shit. You know what I mean? Like, this type of shit. Yeah, like, come on, man. Like, you know what I mean? So this, like, this, like, you know, uh, only, only the plan being hatched out you feel what i mean so black people gotta and, and we and, and there's so much knowledge right now like you feel me where you don't gotta be ignorant there's no there's no reason mm. for a nigga to be ignorant out here you feel me so it's almost too much you know, knowledge yeah come on bro. as soon as you think you gotta figure it out you'll see a whole nother presentation so elaborate yeah. and, and thought out that disagrees you like whoa so right. yeah so it's send you on that it's yeah. gonna send you on that internet spiral yeah knowing nothing me? is is a there's no excuse for There's knowing no nothing. There's no excuse, man. You, you should either me? know enough or too much. You yeah. should not know nothing. Nothing, That's man. true. So, you know what I mean? So with that, now what are we doing? If we know what's going on and we conscious and we, you know what I mean, or whatever, I think if, I, if we keep running into the damn wall, like what the fuck, you know what I mean? So, and that's just, you know, we. It, it's, it's really, like I say, it's really the environment that we in. It's like, I can't, if I stay right here on Vernon, I can't really just be like, mm. I'm just gonna stop gang banging cause them niggas don't give a fuck if I right. stop gang banging. Right. You get what I'm right. saying? So right. as long as I'm in a pit, nigga, it's gonna be, you know what I mean? And then mm. once you leave, you kind of lose a little bit of the favor in the land and shit like you know what i mean so it's tricky i get you know it what I mean? you know so i get tricky. it talk that you talk feel me? So it's, you know what i mean so it's tricky bro about about what you do that's why you catch motherfuckers over there because they still like man you know i'm gonna stay so i need in the this hood. and then yeah. phew, some slide on you the mm. man gets smacked or or you have to knock something down being over and there now you out of here like, yeah mm. like and it's mickey you feel what i mean so and if you ain't and if you live past the point of having to do that Sometimes it's just the natural attraction to the elements and the environment that we have right. because a lot of people don't have to do it no more. Right. I, I, I find myself sometimes mentally uh, paying attention to pressure that doesn't exist because yeah. I know for a fact it's people that started way after me, quit way before me, that get all the respect and with them, and I still let some type of thought or suggestion from another person make me kind of like think about certain shit I know I have to think about. Right. And I know it's a type of mind frame, mindset that Things like this will help the rest of the world start understanding because we are degenerate in our thought process, right, bro. Right. There is no adult male has a gives a fuck about what his childhood friends were thinking about back then and now are trying to live their life based right. upon that shit, bro. Right. And the fact that even with our maturity and our accomplishments, we keep carrying that element. It's a, it could be great. If we stick into the principles, but right. the fact that it was so destructive and detrimental, it's really some bullshit. Yeah, I wish that there was like some redeeming element of what we've been through. It, honestly, it got to be pioneers, bro, and that's you know that's what I'm to trying us to, to develop that. That's what I'm trying to pioneer at. It got to be the motherfuckers who like with like you know the nigga another another format man you feel right. me some other format let's let's find we can still go to war but let's go to war with something on some you know on this let's do let's go to more with this with the with nigga with this government on this dollar let's let's let's, let's put ourselves in a situation where now nigga our voice matter where we can get our motherfucking uh international connections up nigga like nigga i saw a video recently of prodigy rest in peace to hnic that was my nigga from mob deep yeah. He was saying exactly. He was in a car. He was saying just what you said. Like, no, you don't have to take the aggression out, but it's directed in the right, right, 
On the real. And you know what that typically means right now on on the inception of a revolution? That means you're on the front line. It means you would not get to see the success. You're only going for principle. You're out of here. And a lot of, that's courage is hard to find. Yeah, that's, it's a lot. It's (laughs) It's a lot lot to ask, yeah. For real, yeah. You know what I mean? But like I say, it's a lot of solid motherfuckers too, though. You feel me? It's going to be a lot of house niggas. You know what I mean? They going to always be there. You feel me? But, you know, it's a lot of, real niggas man you know what i mean when you talking about because we look at it from a different aspect when you look at it like nigga, okay how many how many real solid niggas you got from rolling 40s boom and even if you got even if you could say something like 10 and you say uh from from bps and you could say 10 and you could say over here and you could say 10, like 20s let's insane. say you say you know what i mean yeah, even a low um, number like 10 and we know two, these areas yes. got crazy numbers of niggas that's in these areas like like, so it's like if you pulling out nigga a number low like that and you still like bro your numbers Did somebody still, teach you that concept uh nah you know i you know i've been let me share with you years ago i went to a meeting with an investment firm that looks for inventions right and i went i had robin petgrave at the compton airport he has an aeronautical program that he runs right He's very successful black entrepreneur but he was at the Torrance airport at this time but him my mother and my father who have never really been a couple since I was born I had them two people I was fresh out of prison had my mother my father and I had Robin Petgrave accompany me to a meeting in Costa Mesa with an invention company because I had an idea and I say all that to say this when I went in there to the meeting the person that I had the the, um, meeting with he went and he asked me, like, okay, your idea is cool. How much you think we can sell it for? Right. And I gave him a number, like, $14. No, no. first he did this. He said, I'm going to write a number down on a piece of paper. And he put it upside down. And he asked me how much I think I can sell it for. Right. And I said, okay. Then he said, how many think we can sell within a week? I would say, he would say, first, he would write a number down that he thinks. Right. Then he'll ask me what I thought. And he'll ask me a series of questions along that line. And every time, the number I thought was way bigger than the number he had wrote down. But then he had me sitting there feeling like, damn, I got the wrong idea. This shit ain't going to pop. He said, well, let's just do the math off my numbers, though. And when he did the math, they were still real crazy. Yeah. So that's the the concept you just reminded me of. It's not a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's That's about like, man, let's. That's how them billionaires get into it, man. They like, um, the, you know, that's why I'm just, uh, my, my boy T4, man, that's my business partner. Like so, you book. know what I mean? I'll be telling them, like, dude, like, yeah, first sharp of all, we, yeah, yeah, you know, we, you know, we spar, we mentally spar and shit. So, mm. you know, and, and, and we was just, I was just explaining to them, like, dude, we don't gotta be taking 50 cent out of all these ventures because mm-hmm. when, once we got 50, 10, once, 22, once we got 50%, eight. we got to do more work for that 50. We got to be more involved in that. Here, we gonna make the plugs that you need to make. We'll take you sound 3%. like an executive producer. You feel what I'm saying? Like if we'll take it here, I, here you do this over here, nigga 2% over there for my little bit of involvement. You get what I'm saying? So I could still, cause time is the money, bro. Like I still need time to be over here doing this. I can't be, I can't That's be. That's the only way an agent or a manager can be successful. Right. Because they take a very small percentage of right. a large group of of right. successful people exactly. and it creates their right. large yeah right. a you lot feel of sense. so if you get and even when you look at it if you got uh two percent two percent two percent two percent two you got 50 built up and you ain't right. even over here right. you still maneuvering around you just been plugging and you got that as it's going and they making anything thing you still got your issue you get what i'm saying so that's where you know what i mean that's that's the part that i feel like you know people that's coming up in here they trying to get too much out of the you know what i mean then you end up being too much involved in this damn project that you don't fucking want to be involved in you, you seem so me? well versed in yeah. not only our lifestyle also in business and and you seem articulate and you yeah. seem to also have a vision yeah tell me with mentioning those things what does that do mean neighborhood nip to someone like yourself who we saw manifest a lot of those energies right before our eyes man i man i remember nip man when nip was selling incense around that motherfucker, man <laughs> like nip had a hustling mind man before you know uh you know we was out we, i was out there with the monsters man you feel me nip was with the shits, man, and Nip was like a nigga, you know what I mean? But he had a different, he, he had a different mind state, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like where, 
You know, you know, and you got a you got a lot of niggas like that too mm-hmm. though in the land. You know them niggas they like, you know, they 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 get in the bag. It's this gang banging out they here, but they got the, they can be yeah. disrespected. They yeah, can be misunderstood. Like, nigga, like type, you know. He was saying? such in a pocket that yeah, it and, was so and appreciated. He, and, he, yeah. and, and he was surrounded by the boys, you That's know what I'm right. saying? So he was so he was so in tune. Like and so that is the shit that when his shit blew up, that's that connection with the goons kept him like I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't, can't take nothing leave from my, you know what I mean? And 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 but see, the whole thing about that is the, the catch twenty two about that is is that loyalty in this shit don't exist, man. Mm. And so it's like Nip is a Nip is a whole lesson, man, mm. in, in, in his life. Preach. Just as just as far as you coming from the struggle. And there's a there, there's a light. I don't give a fuck what how fucked up it is. You coming from the struggle, nigga. This nigga's a foreigner, nigga. Like you know what I'm saying? Like no checkmate. No matter what. Read so the book. He so he coming up and you know he makes something of himself. That's a story in itself. That's a lesson in itself. As him, you know what I mean the moves that he made mm. to to bring him to that two point whatever. You know what I'm saying? M nigga and this nigga coming off Slauson. You feel what mm. I mean? Like and just to know that he was one of the tiny lokes and was out here with niggas and nigga, you feel me? Like he gonna pull up and this and that. If it's a Thunderdome, nigga, nip you will see. A, you know, skinny, like skinny or, hey, as I am, you know, like I finna be right there, there bringing it on, up, put it on, on, yeah, you know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I mean? And then. You know, his dedication, you know what I mean, to what he did with the money is a whole nother lesson. Mm. Nigga, just how he was always still helping and this and that. But a crazy lesson is that once, even though you were lying, Mm. you know what I'm saying, once you're domesticated, Mm. you feel me? Jay Z said that a lot. You long cannot time, right? be released back out there Jay-Z with them said fucking that. lines. He said once you cross over and accept you on this side, he said no matter what you do, no matter how official original you are, you cannot have dual citizenship. He said that a long time ago. But go ahead, break your bread, man. You feel what I'm saying? Like when you come back around, <sighs> the, you know the wild animals, bro. It's it's you smell it's plays, different. It's plays you missing. Yeah, it's plays you coming. You you know what I'm saying? Like first and 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 really. Once you get to that status, bro, I mean, it's hood to say, it's hood to say, oh yeah, nigga, I'll be stealing da, 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 nigga with the, but nigga, do you understand, nigga, you got 2.7 million, you, you, it's different, nigga, looking at you is different. Half of you have changed my life and my family's life, like, you get what I'm saying? You think so hip hop like, has an underlying message that has misguided our successful people who made something out of nothing to think that this attachment to the neighborhood is essential. When it's really the thing that we're I mean, trying yeah, to yeah, whatever their agenda is, they gonna they gonna pump try, that up. We trying to alleviate that though. Anybody yeah. that's stuck in what we consider the have nots, the nothing poverty, your whole motive to get something is to be separated from this shit. But we got a culture of let's get it. Just think about the gray streets. How they doing the projects right now? Imagine a stump down nigga from Baby Low Gray Street. You looking at him like, oh, you ain't no real one because you can't be attached to your projects. That's where we come from. Yeah, yeah well, you ain't been no. But that the government is actually taking these projects from them, doing new shit, different shit, <laughs> different cameras thing. everywhere. Right. But you ain't stumped down because right. you ain't over here acting an asshole up under this stage. Yeah, that's any. That's anywhere. Everybody, everybody feel that. That's that's with every single place that you know that call itself a gang area like nigga if you're not over here bro then this is where it's at standing right here nigga and da, 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 that's where it's that gonna be that used to be it yeah that used to be cool yeah. but just now when this cat when we i feel like we live in a fucking i asked him do i asked him doing what what is they what is what was he supposed to be over here doing with y'all like what was important let me tell you how you go. Let me tell you how i go my homie baby jinx right moved to arizona Years, don't fuck around. Stump yeah. down, original little homie, change his life. Don't fuck around. Nobody, he did so much back in the day, nobody questioned it. Woo woo. But a funeral, reputable funeral, he'll come to LA for a funeral. Where we more most notoriously known for kicking it on 98th, the, the city, the police, or the peoples, they didn't put a cage around it, cameras. We don't have the feel we used to have. You got a it's locked, it's a cage. Woo. Cuz chose to come to a funeral. He live in Arizona. I'm gonna come for the funeral. Woo. Guess what? Last year I was out here for a funeral. It was some politics. So now I'm going to keep it burning. I'm 40-something years old. 
I work in Arizona. Don't do no game banging. Ain't thought about it. I'm coming right. out here for a matter of hours to hang with my childhood friends. And I feel like I need a gun to keep me safe from them. That's crazy. And guess what? He go to jail. Yeah. He go to jail for the pistol. That's how I work, man. It's like, like, so that's what you get out of it. And if you didn't get out of that, if you didn't get that, what uh, what reward could you possibly have that would equal the, the imbalance? Man, but you gotta understand, man, like when you dealing with, you gotta, and you gotta expect that. Not expecting that is the childish part in the nigga, right? Mm -hmm. Is that I'm a, you think I'm a, how, you from cup, bro, y'all is so <clears throat> deep. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> you can't expect all of, all your homies Preach as men. Me. Preach when to they me. Was, when, they was, when they was young, you feel me? When they get older to be the same men with them same morals after life as a black man is whooping your ass or as a man, Latino whooping your ass or Guatemala. You know, we got niggas from yes, all type of everywhere right. for the, like, as life as a minority is whooping your ass. When I see your ass 25 years from now, you do some the same solid shit that you was doing. Bro, that is not... You know, that's bro, the, a childish you, way bro, to think. We gotta, you get what I'm saying? You know you got to come back. Yeah, not, yeah. not without her, no, 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 but yeah. without her. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Because <laughs> you in my head right now, Man. bro. Like, yeah. I just recently, when I watched Mad Ronnie, Neighborhood to Neighborhood, Rest in Peace, funeral, yeah. and then you see some of these reputable days on camera with all this white hair and face, it's like, damn, back in the days when these names was established as intimidating, you didn't see them looking like old men. These same names are reptiles. Shout out to my homie Big J Box from the set. Just came home. Salute. Cut got all white everything. But if I show you the pictures of J Box when he became J Box, you never would imagine you could picture this man as an all white, elderly, all white hair, elderly man that looks naturally not intimidating anymore. Right. And you never thought he would get to a point in his life where he wanted to approach the world as that. Right. But that individual still deserves. In our culture, everything that they built up, he never count. You know, he never. Yeah, just, you know sure, what I'm saying? Just sure. because you're 22 now or 32, way bigger, way stronger, don't mean you' supposed to utilize those energies to be able to treat Cuz any different. Cause right. he ain't never marked the game out <coughs> or things of that nature. But when I looked at the the footage of Cuz funeral and I saw some of the name, even like King Lou, I'm like, Cuz, time passes, yeah. and niggas no longer. Remember how we used to take pictures and try to look like how we feel yeah it's impossible when you got all white hair to right and but <laughs> you feel but see, like but listen, that bro see, here go to here go to here go to trip part about that though and this is where a person will feel like well these niggas these niggas ain't really with me now because what about the person who ain't grown up from that mm, the rest of them is like okay we know we know our motherfucking you know what i'm saying but what about the nigga the old nigga and we all got him that's still like nigga this nigga is 78 this Yo, nigga like, like oh God, i shouted and out the homie box I, like, I shouted so, out big so, box so because now we not going so now he not going to have a yeah. connection with the same ogs and it's going to be like what y'all niggas changed man y'all niggas different y'all weird ain't no loyalty with y'all niggas like you get what i'm saying because because after all these years, bro, people is just going to be at different places in their life. But, but I learned those that go past the 40s and still be with it, if you was stumped down and you stepped away, they don't judge you. Yeah, no, they right. they know. Yeah. If they feel like they're going to be in their 60s and still be like they 16, yeah. they know that's a personal decision. And as long as you didn't do no bullshit and mark out, they know you doing the right thing. They right. just letting you know, nigga. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm just all, you feel me? Yeah. They know they should be doing other than right. because they'll collab with you on anything you got right. to offer. Right. But we know it's certain demons involved in this shit. Right. If they weren't there, I think the culture could actually fade out. Right. Because if you don't have the 40, 50, 60 year old still communicating to the 15, 20 year old, 30 year old that this is cool, that disconnect can establish. But I just want to appreciate you coming through here. I, I thought we was going to do a lot less time. Yeah. I want to right now in front of the cameras, in front of the listeners, re-extend the invite yeah, so we so. can really... You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure, so, sure. anytime, bro. Thank you. Oh, but you already know how to bring my homeboy, no. bro. Neighbor, bro. I want to. I, 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 I want to. Really, I really didn't want to come. <laughs> I didn't thank you yet. No. Let me thank you yeah. real quick for being a real motherfucking homie against the grain. Yeah. 
stand down uh, ten toes. Right. Not just for cuz, yeah. but for one of the most controversial <laughs> individuals yeah, that ever hit the homeboy. internet. We appreciate you. Yeah. And I know how hard it is to be a black skin. Yeah. It ain't easy. Yeah. They don't make it an easy walk. Uh, my kids didn't have it easy growing up. You now. make it look easy, though. So I salute you. We love you. Look like the truth. Neighborhood, bro. bro. Look Let look these like people know where they can see you, runner, when they looking for you, yeah, when they man. thinking about you, when you ain't here. Yeah, man. Check me out, man. You know, my Instagram, hey, runner. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, y'all can follow me on Facebook, man. Runner Perkins. Nigga, that's runner with one N. You feel me? R U N E R. Nigga, H E Y R U N E R on Instagram. You know, runner Perkins, man. Y'all can also, man, check out the book. It's on Amazon, loyalty don't exist you feel me you can go look at the trailer man and go figure out you ain't just got to read the back you know to figure it out man you can go you know what i mean to the trailer watch a little joint of it you feel me see that this shit finna be some real shit it's written in a different format man so oh, he did that be ready for that man you know what i'm saying like once you start reading it though baby you feel me you're gonna catch on man it's a dope it's book a page check it out man i want to i want to thank me? you appreciate that man you know you got a platform it's shout not the only one i'm sure available to you but this one is you could call home Man, I want to shout out my boy Extras, man, who was a big part oh, yeah, of one of my main, one of my main Poor characters, extra. man, Crazy C. You feel me? Like, you know, like I, 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 I based a lot of shit on my nigga Extras and shit mm. like that, man. I took a lot of shit from homies and personalities, mm. man. And Crazy C is gonna you sound be like a, person. a fucking seasoned, you feel me? accomplished author, bro. Man, hey, man, Cause that's what they do. They do all those type of things, bro. Shit, man, I, you know, I saw I shout my nigga out, man, because he's a big influence, man. Yeah. You feel me? So no, shout I my man out, man. man. Rest in peace, Derek. Rest in peace, Derek, man. Craze. What's his name? Darius. Darius. Darius, yeah, man. Rest in peace, my brother Darius, man. And I want to deal with PSA to the locals in the area. If you know, you know. Yeah. If you're aware where we film this, those that are local, um, I saw your comments under my photographs with Bosco and my little homegirl. I get it. I was caught up in the moment, excited. But, yeah, no disrespect intended. I know where I'm at. I know where I'll be at. Much love. I hear the comments, y'all didn't go too hard. I uh, get it. I wasn't trying to bang with the landscape like that. Just caught up in the moment. Some loved ones, a powerful moment, but it's all respect, all love. You want to let his last words? All right, good, bro. No deal, man. Back to a finish. Another one in the can. Oh, my mama, mama, do it like. The life we live right now.